It's Monday, you sit in class and have to listen to a lecture about planetary science. Your teacher talks about the eight planets, how they are scientific marvels, and how they make a stable solar system possible. Boring. Yes, children, forget about what your teacher just said. The planets in the solar system are cool, sure, but did you know that there are way more extreme versions of those same planets out there in the universe? Give me that damn remote, Tracy. It's time to show you what would happen to Earth and the solar system if we replaced our planets with their most extreme version. Starting with Jupiter, the so-called king of the planets. He protects us from incoming comets and asteroids, stabilizes the outer planets by his sheer gravity, and basically holds the entire solar system together. But what if we replaced him with an even bigger version of himself? That planet would be Wasp-17b, one of the largest possible exoplanets known. You would think with the instant doubling of its radius, it would absolutely destroy the solar system, right? Well, wrong. It's basically a giant marshmallow. Its mass is half of Jupiter's, meaning our solar system barely notices. The orbits, they keep chugging along like nothing really happened. And they will do for millions of years. The worst thing that could happen is that it might lose some of its moons because of the lack of gravitational power, and it might consume some of the other moons due to the increased size. But that's about it. Oh yeah, Gravy, that's it. Couldn't do better than that then. You really fell off, didn't ya? Who the f*** were those guys? Apparently, they bought the Gravy Pool Patreon, where you can get your own custom role and profile picture in our free Discord, talk science with me, and also potentially be featured in a video. Guess I shouldn't have judged them so quickly, because they were right. That version of Jupiter would be boring. So what if we made it thicker, like my BBL? Yes, Toy 4603b is another extreme version of Jupiter, and is one of the most massive planets we've ever found at 12.9 times its mass. If it were 13 times Jupiter's mass, it would have become a brown dwarf. It literally could not be a heavier planet. It's also slightly larger too. In fact, because of this new gravitational power, the sun itself would shift positions. Yes, the solar system's berry center, that invisible balancing point between the sun and Jupiter, moves from inside the sun as it is now to outside the sun, which means that it would orbit that point like a planet instead of just chilling in the middle of the solar system. And this will cause chaos, but not just yet. See, planets orbit in ellipses, not perfect circles. That's called Kepler's first law. And with Toy 4603b's massive density and gravity increase over our pathetic normal Jupiter, many of the planet's orbits will stretch and squish unpredictably because the entire balancing point has moved. The solar system just got extreme. But not for Earth, Tracy. Relax, you whiny diva. Who allowed you to sit at the front of this class anyway? No, for now, while we may have a lot more asteroids flung at us and the entire asteroid belt will migrate closer to the inner planets, the chaos has not even yet begun. Let's fix that, shall we? It's time to swap Saturn. Meet J1407b, also known as Super Saturn. And no, that's not an exaggeration. This thing has a ring system that spans, wait for it, over 1.2 astronomical units. That's wider than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. This absolute freak makes Saturn look like it's wearing a hula hoop from a dollar store. It's also basically a Super Jupiter in mass and size. Together, they now rule the solar system. You know, solving the Sun. Now, here's where it gets really fun. Remember how we already wrecked the solar system's balancing point? You know, the berry center, by shoving toy in as Jupiter? Yeah, Super Saturn's enormous rings would get dragged, stretched, and ripped apart almost immediately. You know, over a long period of time. The reason? Gravitational tides. Toy 4603b's insane gravity would yank those rings like me stealing bread pieces from baby ducks at the park. They'd spill across the solar system in let's be honest, beautiful shapes, but the infinite amount of pieces, which basically total the mass of the Earth, maybe, could set course for the inner solar system. This means pieces of rock and ice colliding with asteroids, impacting moons, and basically making every day feel like it could be your last. Fortunately, the chances of us dying because of this would be very slim, but never zero. <laughs> for J1407b itself, the rings are so wide that they'd automatically sweep through most orbits around it. The moons would be gone, well, a lot of them, and anything else near it would either get vaporized by collisions or dragged into the planet itself, as it now has super Jupiter gravitational effects. 
And because we've already broken the solar system's very center, Saturn's new orbit wouldn't even stay stable. It would loop and twist unpredictably. But yes, class, none of this is affecting Earth. And yes, I can see you're falling asleep, but just trust me, it will get worse. Especially for you, Tracy. But let's replace Mercury and Venus with super versions of themselves next. You think Mercury is fast? Oh, please. The fastest known rocky planet in the universe is Kepler-70b. This thing orbits its star in just 5.6 hours. That's faster than a cheetah, a Formula 1 car, and I show speed. It's so fast it literally skims the surface of its star like a dodgeball on fire. It's tidally locked, has surface temperatures hot enough to vaporize metals, and it completes a whole year before you even finish your school day. But we're not leaving this classroom anytime soon today because we're just having so much fun together. See, according to Kepler's second law, when a planet gets closer to the sun, it moves faster. When it's farther away, it slows down. Simple, right? Even you get this, Tracy. Except now, some of the planet's orbits really begin to change. Super Jupiter and Super Saturn, their orbits are no longer nice, stable ellipses. They become very wildly stretched, pulling them closer towards the sun at certain points where they are moving faster, and then getting thrown out again where they move slower. And every time Super Saturn swings in closer, its gravity tugs on Super Jupiter and vice versa. The two biggest monsters in the solar system are now playing tug of war, inching towards the sun, accelerating, and then slingshotting back out on longer and longer paths. This will 100% cause a solar system to completely swap around. But we can't leave out Venus, Mars, Neptune, and Uranus. They deserve extreme versions too. And yes, while these extreme versions won't impact the solar system right now, Venus would be replaced with Karat 7b which is made of raw magma, lava, and rains molten f rock. Mars would be replaced with Ross 128b, basically just a bigger, angrier version that's stuck in a death stare with its red dwarf star, cooking one side or freezing the other. Neptune would be replaced with Toy 674b, which has a much higher temperature, water vapor in its atmosphere, and enough pressure to cook Friday's chicken dinner. And Uranus would be replaced with HIP 41378f, a much larger version with significantly less mass called the Candy Floss Planet. What now, Tracy? Pluto? That has officially been recognized as a dwarf planet in 2006. I didn't know you were into participation trophies, but sure, we'll give him one too. Dragor, a small planet, yes, and the like is confirmed, but also the first confirmed. And it's twice the mass of the moon, which is more than that pathetic thing has now. And it orbits a pulsar, being blasted by radiation every second. So now it's a radioactive zombie rock that cannot be killed and will poison anyone who gets too close. Is that good enough, Tracy? You finally come down a bit? Great. Let's now talk about how all of these extreme planets will destroy the solar system and our existence. See, Kepler's third law states that the farther a planet is from its star, the longer it takes to orbit. Simple again. But here's the catch. We've replaced almost every planet with extreme, massive freaks. Firstly, their orbits aren't behaving anymore. They're tugging on each other, pulling themselves into elongated, unstable paths. And the more they swing towards the sun, the more energy they gain, until they whip back out again. Slower, but stretched out even farther. Every time these super planets swing close to the sun, or yank on each other's gravity, they get squished and stretched like stress balls. Their cores heat up, and their surfaces, if they have them, can quake. Secondly, Venus's orbit around the Berry Center has already changed and now gets much closer to the Earth. This means that the morning and evening star that the Greeks worshipped would be perhaps two to five times brighter than it is now. And while the gravitational effect wouldn't be too different, the tidal heating on Earth would increase, slightly, enough to cause increased earthquakes and maybe some volcanoes. So just your weekly once-in-a-lifetime event. Thirdly, and this is the most fun part, planetary migration. Yes, planets can literally trade positions in a process called chaotic migration, which already happened at the formation of our solar system, but it was less murderous. In simulations, chaotic migration happens when giant planets kick each other inward and outward. And now we've practically guaranteed it. Eventually, one of two things happen. Super Jupiter and Super Saturn collide and release more energy than the sun emits in millions of years, or one gets slingshotted way farther out in the solar system at insane speeds, tearing smaller planets apart in the process and reshuffling the order of the planets and moons. Most likely scenario, number two, which means that the Super Jupiter will be the one that gets accelerated outward 
throwing fiery hellscapes of asteroids and rocks and moons across the Earth's skyline. You will even see it flying by, way larger than our current Jupiter. And the effect of this on the other planets? Eventually, Mercury will literally just get slingshotted out at a thousand kilometers per second, which Earth wouldn't notice. Our super Neptune would migrate, possibly sliding into the habitable zone with its water vapor. Mars would then get directly impacted by this as its orbit would go crazy and get really faster, thanks to Kepler's laws from before. Super Uranus? It'll drift wherever gravity lets it, possibly engulfing entire asteroids and ring rocks as it goes. And Pluto? Well, its dream would finally come true as it gets as close as 7 AU away from the sun, feeling that slightly increase in warmth it could only imagine. All while Neptune would literally be ejected from the solar system entirely in around 8,000 years. So yes, Tracy, your favorite dwarf planet Pluto would finally experience warmth. The cost of that? The end of the solar system. And this is how it would impact Earth. One. Tidal friction from all of this chaos, especially the Super Jupiter, would cause more heating, so you can enjoy even warmer months, and more lava to go with them from the added volcanoes. 2. Earth's maximum and minimum distance from the Sun, called the Perihelion and the Aphelion respectively, would become more extreme. And because of Kepler's third law, summer is shorter, winter is longer, and only the most resilient crops survive. Average temperatures will drop hard. 3. Then Super Saturn settles in a pretty solid orbit around 2 AU away from the Sun, while Super Jupiter is literally flying in and out of the solar system, which causes a gravitational drag on Earth, reheating it up again, slightly, but also creating more volcano, more than slightly. 4. On top of that, Venus's orbit will cross over Earth's, but likely never lead to a collision, just high fives as they get a bit closer. And finally, this interaction would make Earth's orbit even more extreme and elliptical. We would not be in front of the sun long enough to get maximum heat, and so you would have to survive on fake food and mirror placements, except for a small farmable region, which would then become the reason for yet another world war. So yes, we would all basically be dying in the trenches of World War V while experiencing skin cancer, mass starvation, extreme frostbite, and most likely an ancient super bacteria pandemic. The end. Wasn't that fun, guys? Wait, why is everyone asleep? Are you kidding me? You think all of this was boring? Fine. Let's give you an 8K HD ultra realistic OLED experience and replace the final planet in the solar system, Earth itself. Meet LHS-114b, the creepy eyeball planet. But don't get it wrong. This is a super Earth with 5.6 times Earth's mass and 1.73 times its size. It's a giant frozen ice ball, or perhaps an ocean world depending on its orbit, but with a single permanent eye staring at its star. A massive 4,000 kilometer wide ocean shaped like an iris locked onto its sun forever. The rest of the planet frozen solid. And it's not just creepy to look at. This planet could actually work as a habitable world. Its star is a dim, cool red dwarf, meaning this icy world sits right up in the habitable zone. That liquid ocean potentially sitting at a comfortable 20 degrees. Perfect for a thriving alien ecosystem right in the middle of a planetary ice sheet. So, let's take it and replace our Earth with it in the current chaos, because there's evidence it might have a nitrogen-rich atmosphere just like Earth's. But this is where it gets brutal. Gravity. On LHS-114b, you'd weigh nearly twice as much as you do now. Every step would feel like walking up an incline with a backpack filled with your parents' disappointment. In this chaos-ridden solar system we've created, LHS-114b wouldn't just be a bigger super-Earth, it would start to dominate. It's so massive that over time, smaller bodies in the inner solar system could actually start orbiting it. We'd have more moons. The Earth would become the new king of the inner solar system. That is, until it eventually collides with Venus from being in the same orbit. Or Super Saturn forces the Earth's orbit to become so extreme, we literally all freeze to death anyway. And the worst part, the moon would just laugh at us. I wish we could swap out that little too.